In general, then, you know, what he's saying is that the origin of language lies in these pictures and images, right? So he's saying the earliest language had these pictures and images, right? Uh, and he says this really toward the end. He said, thus we see the coming foundation of all these various modes of writing and speaking was a picture or image, right? So that's, uh, that lies sort of at the origin of language in a sense, right? The, the early, earliest language presented to the imagination through the eyes or ears, which being the simplest and most universal of all kinds of information, the first reaching where the arbitrary characters of an alphabet could not be deciphered and the latter where abstract terms were not comprehended, we must needs conclude them to be the natural inventions of necessity. So he's saying that, you know, back in the, in the early days when people were trying to invent language in a sense, right, uh, they must have used these types of pictures and images um, because um, they were, it would have been necessary to use them because they would have been the, you know, uh, without a habit of using language, you would have needed such kind of um, um, sort of a, uh, a sort of middle thing, a sort of um, thing that's half action and half communication, right? Because, you know, he started with this whole idea of action, that your action itself can communicate, right? Um, so, I mean, you could, even, you, you could even hear, I mean, he doesn't do this, but we could sort of extrapolate by saying, you know, you, you can look at sort of some examples of animal behavior, right? Um, you know, like the peacock with its, with its big feathers, that's sort of an action, but there's a kind of communicative function of that, right? Um, or, um, you know, you could say that like, you know, um, you know rams with, with big horns, right? The, the bigger the horns, it's kind of, it's, 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 not, it's, it's a kind of an action, it's a kind of a, a, an image, but it has a kind of communicative effect in trying to sort of scare away the other, uh, the other big rams, right? Um, so we have a kind of example that he's showing us of a kind of communication um, that kind of bridges, it does kind of bridge between a kind of animal language that could be an, a language of actions and a kind of human language, right? So he's, he's trying to construct um, this gradual bridge between forms of communication that start out as pure action but also have a communicative element to it and then become more and more, um, I guess, stylized and more abstract um, as the development of language continues, right? Um, and so he's saying that pictures and images were necessary in the beginning um, because those arbitrary signs would have, would have been uh, incomprehensible, but you can get to those arbitrary signs through this sort of passage from, you know, um, actions to, um, uh, then he says, these, these, these apologues, the proverbs, and then the similes and metaphors. Huh? Okay, so... Um, he then emphasizes that these previous modes of speech are still in use. It's not as if you, once you've you started with the hieroglyphics um, and you move toward, you know, he says you go from hieroglyphics to symbolic <coughs> hieroglyphics, then Chinese symbols, and then alphabetic letters, that the earlier ones um, are not useful anymore. No, they, they're still used. They're still um, things that are uh, important, and they, in fact, often have the, the, the most um, effective um, kind of representational value because of this sort of imagistic character that they have, right? So, but, but you know, he's, he's laying out this, um, um, this progression, nevertheless, um, from, well, in, in terms of speech, from speech by action, then apologue, and then simile and metaphor, um, even though all of these different types of figures then remain in use even, uh, even when you've progressed to the next stage. All right. Okay, so overall, um, so this is going over sort of the kind of the overall warrant that he's, that he's working with. Um, he says that, you know, universals arise when particular images become general through habitual use. I mean, that's his, 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 his basic thesis, right? He's got these different examples, right? The, the, the caduceus, for example, and the, and the story of the trees and how it transforms itself into these different uh, proverbs and similes and metaphors. Um, but I think, you know, the, the general warrant that he's using is that the development of language is to move from this figural use of, of action to a more literal use when a particular image becomes a general one. And I, I may, maybe, I'm, uh, maybe I'm, I'm pushing it a little far with, with the literal use, where I guess what I think what, 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 what we're saying is that it becomes more and more familiar, is what he's saying. It's once it becomes more familiar, it's, um, there's not anything obviously figurative about what you're, what you're doing, right? Um, so that, that essentially every word starts out as something that's really kind of strange um, and there's a kind of clear kind of imagistic quality to the word and as it becomes more and more familiar then it doesn't seem to have that 
kind of metaphoric quality, it seems like just a literal uh, use of something, right? Um, so like, if you recall, uh, last time we talked about how uh, somebody was, one of the phrases that he called very fantastical and metaphorical is to build somebody up, right? Uh, which is, you know, it's, it's using a kind of construction of a house metaphor to talk about a person. But we, we say that all the time, to build somebody up, right? I mean, to, you know, to, uh, you know to, to, to make them feel better about themselves or something like that, right? I mean, and it's, it's, it's actually, strictly speaking, a metaphorical use, but we use it kind of as a literal one, right? That it's, it's just our way of speaking, it's a familiar way of speaking. And so he's, he's kind of laying out that development as the development of language, right? From particular um, to general. Okay?